Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Swuss. Uh, talking NBA Friday. Got six games on the board. A couple bad ones, but there are a couple decent games here. Uh, as far as Thursday night, night started off hot. Hit the Mavericks, hit the T-Wolves. I uh, just lost the Jazz. Now it's up to the Lakers. Uh, I'm guaranteed a winning night either way. But if the Lakers lose and don't cover, I actually went from starting off 3-0 and to just barely making a few dollars. I would just slightly be in the green. Uh, whatever. It's been a great week. I'm not going to stress over winning a few dollars. Green is green, right? Uh, but yeah, we got six games on the board. NBA Friday. Let's do it. Welcome to the source. The source. Source. Hey, get the source. First up, Hawks are on the road in Philly. Uh, Sixers are catching three and a half points at home. That number's been bet down. I saw it at four and a half and five uh, earlier. So that number's been bet down to three and a half. Total sitting at 242 and a half. Let's take a quick look at the spreadsheet. And according to the model, we should see a three point Hawks win. Final score 123 120 Atlanta. Injuries on the Hawks side. Uh, DeJounte Murray is listed as questionable. Clint Capella is going to miss another game. And DeAndre Hunter is going to play in this one, or at least looks like he's going to. He's listed as probable. On the Sixers side, as we know, they're in bad shape here. Joel Embiid out for the foreseeable future. Uh, Batum is still out. Covington still out. Melton's still out. Uh, we don't know if we're going to see the two new pieces in this one either. Buddy Heald and Campaign both listed as questionable. Betting trends on the Atlanta side. Look at this. Hawks 4-1 against the spread in their last five. Not many positive Hawks trends this year. 4-1 in the last five. Way to go, Hawks. Uh, they are just 3-7 and seven against the spread in their last 10 on the road, though. Most of their recent success has come at home. Hawks have also been going over the total a lot. 7-2 and two to the over in the last nine Atlanta games. On the Philadelphia side, we got some ugly-looking trends here. Uh, Sixers just 2-8 and eight against the spread in their last 10. 0-4 oh against the spread in their last four at home. Things are looking rough for Philly here, man. You hate to see it. As far as this particular head-to-head -head matchup, the Sixers have gotten the better of the Hawks. 6-3-1 and one against the spread in their last 10 matchups against Atlanta. The over is 5-1 and one in their last six. So let's match these two teams up on the court. Uh, and first, we got to pull up the above the break three numbers for Atlanta's offense, because as we know, Sixers have been getting absolutely cooked from out there. That's why I faded them in the Brooklyn game. That's why I faded them in the Golden State game. They just cannot defend the above the break three right now. And good news for Philly, Atlanta hasn't been taking many of those shots. Just 19th in frequency from above the break three in the last 10 games for the Hawks. Actually, where Atlanta's been taking most of their shots is on the interior, uh, specifically that short mid-range shot. 22% of the Hawks' shot attempts have come from that zone in the last 10 games. It's the fourth most in the NBA in that time span. That happens to be the only shot zone that the Sixers have defended well recently. In the last 10 games, they're 10th in frequency, 12th in efficiency there. So it actually might not be a bad matchup for the Sixers defense, but overall, we can't ignore that we're dealing with one of the hottest offenses in the NBA against one of the coldest defenses. In the last 10 games, Hawks are seventh in overall offensive rating. Philly is 25th. And if you scroll down and look at strength of schedule in that span, Atlanta's third, Philly 30th. So Atlanta's putting up way better numbers on this side of the court uh, in the last 10 games with a way stronger schedule. On the other side, we got the Philly offense. I'm um, switching it up to the last five games so we can get an idea of what this offense looks like without Joel Embiid. Uh, they're attacking the paint a lot. 25% of their shots have come from the paint. 33% of the shots at the basket. So 58% of the six-year shot attempts in the last five games have come on the interior. But look at the field goal percentage. They're not hitting them. 29th and 22nd. Uh, Atlanta's terrible at protecting the basket, but they've actually got nice looking defensive numbers against those short mid range shots. As far as betting this game, look, there's no way I can back the Sixers right now. Uh, I'm not entirely comfortable laying three and a half points on the road with the Hawks either. Uh, so, what I'm going to do, this is a pass for me for now. Maybe I'll lean towards an over. If this number keeps dropping and I can get the Hawks at like one and a half, two, I, I might buy in then, but. At three and a half, this is probably a pass. I'll let you know in the live show the final decision, but I'm passing for now. Next game. Washington on the road in Boston. Celtics are laying 16. That number's been bet down from 17. Total sitting at 238 and a half. Let's take a quick look at the spreadsheet. And according to the model, we're looking at an 11 point Celtics win. Final score 121 110 Boston. Injuries on the Wizards side. Uh, Marvin Bagley is still out. Rashawn Holmes is questionable. Uh, so this is a Wizards team that's already weak as hell on the interior and have been all year. 
they might be missing both of their main bigs here. Remember, Daniel Gafford's gone. He left in the trade deadline. So Marvin Bagley and Rashawn Holmes are the two bigs in this rotation right now, and they both might be out for this game. On the Boston side, Celtics are in pretty good shape here. Jason Tatum's listed as probable. Uh, the two new pieces are both questionable, though. Jaden Springer and Xavier Tillman. Uh, we don't know if they're going to make their Celtics debut yet. Betting trends on the Boston side. Celtics just 1-5 against the spread in the last six. 1-6 against the spread in their last seven at home. That's ugly, Boston. Um, 14 and 13 against the spread as home favorites this year. On the Washington side, man, these Wizards are road warriors. 15, 9, and 1 against the spread on the road this year. The fourth most profitable road team in the NBA this season. 4 0 against the spread in their last four on the road. So the Wizards on the road has been a hot ticket. As far as this particular head to head matchup, though, uh, Washington just 1 and 5 against the spread in their last six against the Celtics. Three straight overs in this head to head matchup. So let's match these two teams up on the court. And I mean, obviously, we know we're dealing with a huge mismatch here. The line is 16, 16 and a half for a reason. In the last 10 games, Boston's the third most efficient team in the NBA compared to 26 for Washington. And it gets even worse when you look at the strength of schedule numbers. Boston fifth, Washington 23rd in the last 10. When we take a deeper look at the Wizards offense, they have been taking a lot of those short mid-range shots. 25% uh, of the Wizards shot attempts in the last 10 games have come from that zone. It's actually the weakest defensive zone for the Celtics recently. So I guess that's a positive angle for Washington's offense. But the thing is, what does Washington's offense like to do most? What are they best at? The fast break. I mean, that's been by far the best offensive weapon for the Wizards all season is the fast break. On the season, they're third in fast break frequency, six in efficiency. But look at the Celtics first in defensive efficiency against the fast break this season now when we flip it over to the other side and look at boston's offense this is actually where the handicap gets interesting because we know the celtics love to shoot the three ball in the last 10 games 48 percent of the celtics shot attempts have come from three. First and above the break frequency 10th and corner frequency look at the wizards defensive numbers against the three ball in the last 10 i mean this is a top 10 maybe even a top five three-point defense right now the weakness for washington's defense all season has been protecting the basket and with gafford gone with Bagley out with Rashawn Holmes maybe out it's gonna be a huge weakness I don't know how they're gonna protect the rim but the good news for the Wizards is the Celtics don't attack the rim it's not what Boston's offense does in the last 10 games just 25 percent of the Celtics shot attempts have come at the basket that's 27th in the NBA as far as betting this game I mean obviously I have to play Washington they got a great record against the spread on the road it's actually a decent matchup for them I just hate the line it feels like they're begging me to bet Washington but the fact that I saw it drop from 17 down to 16 raises my confidence a little bit. This is kind of, look, I understand if you're not telling this one, but I'm going to do it. Give me Washington plus 16 and a half. I'm going to see if I can grab a 17 out there. I don't see one right now, but yeah, I'll be playing Washington next game. Rockets are on the road up in Canada to play the Raps. Toronto laying two and a half points or two or three. This line's kind of all over the place. Um, total sitting at 231 and a half. Let's take a quick look at the spreadsheet. And according to the model, Rockets should win this one outright. Final score, 116, 114 Houston. Injuries on the Houston side. Uh, Fred Van Vliet's going to miss another game. Tyree Eason is still out. I don't think Van Vliet is expected back till after the All-Star break, I think. On the Toronto side, the Raps are at full strength with the exception of the two new guys they just got from the Jazz. Agbaji and Kelly Olnick, both listed as questionable. Betting trends for the Raps look pretty ugly. Toronto just 4-9 against the spread in their last 13. 0-3 against the spread in their last three at home. Uh, on the season, they're 6-7 and seven against the spread as home favorites. On the Houston side, uh, Rockets are 5-2 and two against the spread in their last seven. Houston's been covered the number recently. Uh, just 9 9, 13 and 1 against the spread on the road this year. 24th most profitable team on the road. So Houston hasn't been a great team to bet on the road this year, but 3 and 1 against the spread in their last three on the road. As far as this particular head to head matchup, Toronto has really struggled against the Rockets. Raps are just 2 and 8 against the spread in their last 10 matchups against Houston. Just 1 and 4 against the spread in their last five home games against Houston. So the Rockets haven't had problems going up to Toronto. Uh, five straight overs, too. Five straight overs in Raptor, uh, Raptors Rockets games. So let's match these two teams up on the court and let's start with just some overall efficiency numbers because we got to point out that the Rockets have just been way better than the Raptors. And I don't think people really realize just how much better they've been in the last 10 games only the hornets have been a less efficient basketball team than toronto they're 29th in net efficiency houston's 10th and if we scroll down the strength of schedule it's dead even 16th and 17th and if we take a look at the matchup for houston's offense 
Right off the bat, look at the numbers at the basket. In the last 10 games, the Rockets have taken 37% of their shot attempts at the rim. That's the second most in the NBA in that time span. Look how bad the Raptors have been at protecting the basket recently, 26th and 28th. The Rockets' offense is not good by any means, but if there's one matchup that's favorable to Houston offensively, it's a defense that can't protect the rim. On the other side of the court, we got the Raps' offense, and actually, Toronto's been taking a ton of shots at the rim as well. They're actually tied with the Rockets, 37% frequency at the basket. The difference is, Houston's been an elite defense protecting the basket all season. In the last 10 games, 5th and 11th. And the matchup actually gets a little worse for Toronto, What's the biggest strength of this Raptors offense? The fast break. On the season, they're second in frequency, 12th in efficiency. The Rockets have arguably the best transition defense in the NBA this year, certainly top three. As far as betting this game, straight up, I think the wrong team's favorite in this one. Uh, the only reason I see to bet Toronto in this spot is the fact that Houston has to immediately fly down to Atlanta the next day to play the Hawks. But the Raps have the back-to-back -back also. They have a game on Saturday as well, so... I'm not overthinking this one. I already bet it. I took Houston at plus three, and I took the money line. Next game. Hornets on the road in Milwaukee to play the Bucks. Uh, Milwaukee laying 14 and a half points at home. The total sitting at 232 and a half. Let's take a quick look at the spreadsheet. And according to the model, we should see a nine point Milwaukee win. Final score 121, 112 bucks. Injuries on the Charlotte side. Uh, this is a weird one. LaMelo Ball and Mark Williams both still out. After that, they have a good chance of being at full strength for this one. The reason I said it's weird is we don't really know what full strength is. Grant Williams is on the Hornets now. He's questionable. Kyle Lowry, Seth Curry. I mean, these guys are listed as probable. There's just a bunch of guys here on the injury report who have never played a game with the Hornets before. So I don't really even know what to make of that. On the Milwaukee side, uh, I got to ask who's playing point guard in this game for the Bucs? Because campaign is gone. Pat Beverly is not making his Bucks debut yet. Damian Lillard is out. I don't even know if they have another point guard on the roster, to be honest. Uh, Chris Middleton is out as well. So, I mean, who's handling the ball for the Bucs in this game? This game is so weird. I'm not even going to dive into this one. I might bet Charlotte. It'll be Hornets or Pass. Uh... I mean, Bucks have been almost an auto fade, and I don't even know who's playing point guard. So, you know what? I probably will bet Charlotte, but I haven't really looked at anything. I, this game kind of frustrates me. It kind of represents the current state of the NBA. We need to fast forward past the all-star break. Um, so, yeah, Hornets are past. I'll let you know if I come up with something on the live show tomorrow at 4 p.m. I'm actually going to cut it off there. There are two games left on the board, two good ones, too. Uh, Denver at Sacramento, New Orleans at L.A., the Lakers. But the Nuggets-Lakers game, as of recording this, they're still playing. They're in the fourth quarter. So, so I don't want to handicap the game or make any decisions before i see how this game plays out uh we'll go over both of them on the live show though at 4 p.m if you want my top bets for all sports parlays of the day or you want to join our discord head over to kylecrims.com the information is right there on the home page let's have ourselves a good friday night here it's been a great week in the nba let's keep that rolling remember to bet responsibly and i'll talk to you in the discord